Well guys, it's a Saturday morning out here and I am dying to hop on the tractor and get working on more of the site area for our sawmill so that we can actually start using it and also get this container moved back there which we discussed in our container off-grid workshop video. But there's just a lot of tractor work that needs to be done which is a lot of fun but I don't have that much time during the week to do it so out here on a Saturday morning and we're just going to get after it and see, uh, see how much we can get done in a few hours. So let's get to it. Well, that's one way to spend your Saturday is working on the tractor outside. It is a beautiful day and on your property. What is life? Also, that lane shark amazes me every time that we use it. It is a feast. We're going to take a quick break to talk about today's sponsor, Ariat. If you've been watching the channel for a while now, you know that Molly and I have been slowly cleaning up our five acre property, including this area right over here next to these oak trees. That was a very popular video. And we've been doing all of that in our Ariat workwear. Now, based on reading prior videos, comments, I can tell that many of you guys have also enjoyed the Ariat products that you've picked up. And many of you have been using them for years in the past and have really enjoyed them too. So I think it goes without saying that Ariat makes some of the highest quality workwear available out there today. And it's also very affordable. If you're interested in checking any of it out, there's a 10% off coupon code, as well as links to all of our favorite products down in the description below. If you have a product that you really enjoy from Ariat, feel free to leave a comment down below because I'm always looking for something new to try out. Thank you, Ariat, for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back to the action. Not too shabby. Too shabby. Here, go, sweet. Thank boy. you. I haven't really looked up to see what I've done, but wow. Done a lot in the All last right. couple hours. I don't even recognize it. I mean, I need... So now I got to get the grapple out and I need to go around and pick up all the debris of the big stuff because I didn't attempt to mulch everything. I just, you know, cut down stuff that needed to be cut down and bush hogged as much as I could. So yeah, now I got to put the grapple on and, but I want to walk back there. Let's go. <laughs>
got one goal for today, and that is to finish up the site prep so that we can move the sawmill over there and cut a log by the end of the day. That's the goal, to be able to get everything set up, dialed in, and a log on the sawmill and cut. So we're getting started here kind of early, and uh, fingers crossed we get all this done because I want to cut a log today. Me too. I guess there ain't nothing to it but to do it. work is pretty fun. I'm just gonna sit here in my lawn chair in the sun and just soak it in. All right guys, let me tell you what we're up against here. So this is our ideal location for the saw mill, um, both now and probably into the future. But as you can see, I've created essentially a mud pit or what will be a mud pit but I kind of had no choice but to do this this has to happen at some point because there are so many roots and organic material in this area so many saplings that we cut off because this if you remember this area right here was just straight up saplings like that's all it was there was no really grass here it was just sapling after sapling after sapling so it's full of you know everything from very small ends which don't really matter up to like pretty big and substantial uh, root systems and sapling bases now the problem with that is is that when you're running heavy equipment and you're especially when you're heavy on the front with a log and stuff you do not want to hit one of those you can shred a tire and tires are not cheap on equipment like this they are very very expensive so I have been very hesitant to run through here you know willy-nilly I've been like cognizant of where the tires are at and where those bigger stumps are and I've been ripping those out, but as you can see, to get even started, I've made a mud pit. So needless to say, I don't really think this is going to be the best spot to set the sawmill up right now. This spot needs a lot of work, but we also need to use the sawmill to create a sawmill shed and area for the sawmill to go. So we do need the sawmill set up. So we're in a bit of a predicament and that we need the sawmill somewhere, but we also need to have access to all this area to continue getting it prepped for building you know our ultimate sawmill setup for you know the future so now we're kind of just like uh <laughs> where are we gonna put it now <laughs> yeah now we're at plan b so now we're just looking around and trying to figure out where the best place would be for it for at least for the time being some of our criteria that we're looking at is first of all flat that's the most important thing second off is the ground material so want something that's not going to be muddy but also is not super inconsistent to where it's difficult to bring logs up to it and or walk on it so those are two priorities that's fairly easy to find here but the next ones are is that we like shade but we really don't want shade underneath pine trees because that means that you just have sap dropping on you and the sawmill throughout the day obviously there'll be sap on the sawmill bunks themselves from you know logs but I don't really want it on you. <laughs> it on me and everything else that I have next to the sawmill. So that's another thing that we're sort of thinking about is that limits our spots pretty dramatically. And it pretty much means that we're just out in the open, which means we're in the sun, which isn't ideal. <laughs> I guess unless it's cold outside, then it is nice. So there's just so many different, you know, things to, to think about and consider as well as, you know, things that are like, can we get the tractor in and maneuver it well enough to get to the sawmill efficiently but also like weighing that from what molly is willing to have in her backyard right so like <laughs> you know it, it can i put it you know on our back patio and have a perfect setup with with a perfect slab yeah you know and i might, I might would do that but molly wouldn't be happy about that so we're, lo we're looking at we're looking you at, imagine <laughs> <laughs> we're looking at all the options right now well, after debating a bit, we have some good news. We're on uh, on grass. We're not under pine trees. 
We have great access. Minimal site prep needed. There is some bad news, though. Uh, we're about, I don't know, 20 yards from the house. <laughs> it, it's still undecided as to how much Molly is against this, but for the time being, she's allowing me to do it, so we're going to go for it <laughs> while, while we still can. <laughs> it's only temporary, right? Yeah, so here's our thoughts. It's temporary, right? And really, ultimately, in my mind, you know, I want it back there. But if we put it right here, then Molly is going to bug me about it being moved back there quite often compared to if I put it back there in the first place, right? Which means that I'm going to want to get <laughs> all that area cleaned up quicker so that I can get it back there. So really, it's just like motivation for me to be able to do all this a little sooner, so. Smart. Yeah, look at there. Smart. Not too bad, huh? Not too bad. <laughs> it's just temporary. Yeah. That's what I'm gonna tell myself. But the thing is, it's always on wheels, so if we can always move it. I don't know why we're being so specific. Like, we can literally move it tomorrow. I know. I know. But. That is true. But I do want, I, I would like to set it up one time for the time being and get it dialed in and not have to move it for a while at least until we get through our initial logs and everything. So I think this is gonna work. I want a dining table, so I'll allow it. <laughs> well, we gotta build the kiln first. Oh yeah, <laughs> that too. Got this basically brand spanking new chainsaw that I have not got to cut anything down with yet. So uh, let's give her a whirl. <laughs> Hello. Careful. Hello, you're just like a kid. Just like a kid, huh? go quite as well as I planned because I basically smashed right into this oak tree that I was trying not to hit. I'll show you kind of what happened. So first of all, this tree is is actually a weed. It's not even a tree, which is insane to think about. But yeah, this is not even this is not even a tree. It's a Chinese weed something something. We have a, <laughs> we have a few of them on the property, and they're yeah terrible. They, they're terrible. They just make these white leaf things that just fall and go everywhere, and they're not even trees. Anyway. So this tree had a real heavy lean towards that oak tree, basically dead on it. And what I was trying to do was obviously miss it. But what happened is, is I came in and made my uh, face cut here and I made it on an angle on purpose, angling that way. My hope was is that I was gonna come around and uh, nibble out this, this hinge wood here first and basically make the tree roll off and try to roll off and miss that oak tree. That was my idea, but it broke. It snapped off, which is probably because it's a weed and not a tree. It snapped off with a substantial amount of hinge wood in here. You can see not very many fibers like held on. They just sheared off. And so it went the way it wanted to go, which could be because it had so much lean, but also because I think of the type of tree or not tree it is. Yeah, it didn't go quite as planned, which leads me to a little bit of a life lesson when it comes to trees. I want to show you something on this oak tree. If you look at this oak tree behind me, it's a small oak tree, but you can see how much of a bend it has to it. See how it's bent over from this tree leaning into it? Now you have to imagine, that's a 4x4. Four four. Imagine a 4x4 four four fence post that you had that much lean on, that you had that much curvature to. How much force that would take. My point being is that this tree has put that tree and quite the bind and vice versa. There is a ton of weight and force holding this tree up. So if you just go cutting into this tree, a lot of really bad stuff can happen. You gotta think through what's gonna happen when something does break or release. First of all, which way is the tree going to open up and go because it has to release that energy somewhere. And also, uh, which way it's going to roll off. So, like in this instance, 
it's pretty obvious that the majority of the weight is on this left side and the butt of the stump is on the on this side of the or the butt of the trees on this side of the stump so it really can't go that way it's gonna come this way however if I start cutting on this side it's going to come directly at my chest when it does so I want to be on that side cutting and I want to make sure that I'm being you know very aware of what's happening because not only will you pinch your saw blade but again these things can really hurt you even with just a small tree holding it up like this We're getting this thing essentially perfectly level but also in the same plane because really level is less important front to back level you know all that's going to do is basically either make this saw head go downhill or uphill you know it's not that big of a deal however you do want it to be not twisted if it's twisted or there's a bow or there's a hump a bow or a hump a bow or a sag in the frame then that's going to show up in your lumber right so you want the plane of this thing to be the same both this way and that way and then if it's level at the end that's an added perk but we can do all of the above with these tools very easily i'm sure you've probably seen one of these if you've ever bought these and you're like i don't know what that is probably like threw it away or tucked it in a drawer and never used it but i'll show you exactly what this is for and how easy it makes setting stuff like this up. If you've ever tried to use one of these lasers outside, it's very hard to see. However, if you put something reflective in front of the laser, it doesn't really matter how far away it is. You know, unless it's just absolutely insanely bright, you'll be able to see it on that reflective bit. So on these, not only are they red, which makes it easier for you to see the laser, it also has this reflective film on this side which lets you be able to see your laser much easier. Now this crosshair here, this is the exact same height as your laser. See that? So if I were to set this here and here, this would be the exact same height as this middle crosshair. And what that allows you to do is, for instance, I'll set it up this way so you can see it. Okay. So as you can see, this is perfectly aligned with that center mark and we really don't care about the vertical mark, but uh, it is useful to know where the laser is pointed as far as this way goes. So all we have to do is set this up on one end of our sawmill. And this thing's actually magnetized, which is nice. So all we're going to do is set it up in the middle on one end. And then first things first is go to the middle of each bunk and just get the entire machine level. Okay, so level and in the same plane front to back. So all we're doing is going down each one, making sure that the laser hits in the exact same spot on this card on every single bunk. We're not putting it left to right, it has to be in the center because you can get variables that way. So it's in the center, that means that we have everything flat this way. That was super simple. Then if you're really lucky like us, in there, dead nuts. we set it up fairly level already, so we had to do very minor adjustments. Then all you're going to do is take this and slide it to one side and then to the other side and you can kind of watch the laser go across there and you'll know whether or not this bunk is level and level and in the same plane as the bunk behind it 
You then go to the next one and repeat the process all the way down the sawmill. And that makes sure that this thing is dialed because lasers don't lie. You know, if you have this thing set up and it's in that mark, it's good. You know, it's as good as it's gonna get. Honestly, we're probably within like a, definitely within a 16th, which is pretty, pretty amazing. It's not gonna stay that way because stuff's gonna settle out and things, but this will allow me to check it very simple, very simply. 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 If you're like most of us out there and have never seen one of these things and throw it away, go dig it out of a drawer and uh, you might find a use for it. This makes me so happy. I'm so excited for this. Me too. Oh my gosh. So this is also gonna be sort of a test as to whether or not that stack of logs we have back there is gonna be worth anything. Cause this one was laying right on the ground for probably 18 months or so. And uh, yeah, it's probably, probably one of the worst of them out there. So she feels very waterlogged. Mm. But that might be a good thing because it might mean there's actually i don't know i don't know what i'm saying let's just Let, open her up let, let's just let's just find out why don't we? <laughs> all right i guess this is the first time i have to like kind of figure this whole I mean, this is literally the first log we've ever milled i've never even been around a sawmill let alone know, me either i've never well i think no we've been around one at one trade show so we can't say we've never seen one in person we've seen have one we? in person have we yeah we saw one wood miser one time huh oh. i was like in the parking lot yeah, yeah yeah this guy up i think this is this is what i need to be doing here and I'll get him about right right there he could come over here <laughs> Brother. Now, according to the manual, we're not supposed to run any fluid on the first. I think uh, I'll have to look back. There's first 30 minutes of cutting, I think. Just to break in all the bearings and whatnot. So, you know, I think we uh, watched enough Matt Cremona videos to so know we just need to sort of. <laughs> I don't know. Just eyeball it and go for it. <laughs> this is so crazy. Are we just going for it? Let's just go for it. <laughs> All right. I think we're supposed to let the motor warm up a bit, so we'll do that. Gas is on this time, so. <laughs> have discoloration but that's the vibe right yeah <laughs> I look like a real logger with all that and I realized that I left the sawmill on the other side of the log. <laughs> I gotta raise it up.
that is this? so big. Ready? Yeah. Full throttle and just slow. Okay. Yep. Ready? Yep. and I missed Molly's first go, but she's been having a lot of fun. I keep turning the thing off for some reason. I don't know how I'm doing it. I just stopped recording. You're not a filmer. I'm not a filmer. <laughs> Look at it, though. That was just an old, crappy log. Look how big these pieces are. That's some beefy, right? beefy boards. Right? Well, let's keep going. <laughs> it's right on it. Right on it. notice on this last cut we had we had a wavy cut so if you look right here see that big wave right there when it hit this uh, mm -hmm. hit this big knot mm. kind of gouged the board and then it came back pretty straight after that but uh, that probably means that I need to recheck everything the tensions and stuff because now it's like gotten you know stretched out and broken in so we need to probably stop and recheck our tensioning before we continue much more. Oh, goodness. I'm okay. I'm okay. I know it sounds terrifying, but I'm okay. What a day. Well, guys, I call that a success. We got the sawmill set up today. We got it running, milled our first log, and look at the results. This was a, a log that had been sitting for 18 plus months on the ground directly on the ground here I hadn't shed the bark off the bark fell off on its own we did basically nothing to try and you know keep these logs from getting bugs and things in them and I don't see any if I guess I see maybe some limited very limited holes near the outer sapwood of these boards and uh, yeah I think these is all of those logs I think are going to be good Thank but goodness. look at how cool this is so i lay we laid out all the boards here right so here's like kind of our waste material out of this this is that one tiny little log which is so neat but there's probably another few one by material boards you know in this stuff if we were to put it back on the sawmill like that's pretty darn thick I probably almost get a two by four out of the center mm -hmm. It's yeah, it's about four inches thick in the center. So there's more wood to be had out of yep. this if we wanted it. Here we got five eight quarter, which is two inches thick, 14 inch wide by 50, 58 inches, I think, boards. And then we got one that is the same dimensions, but um, is one inches thick, so four quarter, which is somewhere in the neighborhood of about 62 board feet of lumber, just right here, not including the extra bits we could get out of that. Out of that one single tiny little log and 62 board feet of lumber in our area like this obviously it's not dried but in our area a rough cut is anywhere between a dollar and two dollars probably somewhere around a dollar fifty or so but more or less this little bitty log just produced about a hundred dollars worth of 
material in about 30 minutes. That is crazy. Yeah. And we have so many logs. Yeah. It is nuts how much lumber this is. Because if you were to look at this, like, just to give you, like, a, I guess, uh, a little bit more common board sizes. But this is two inches thick, right? So if we were to do two by fours, we would get full dimension two by fours. We would get uh, three of them out of each of these boards. An even crazier thing would be to say that we get one by seven, which would turn into like a true dimensioned one by six after you clean it up and plan it and everything. We would get 20, right? Yeah, we'd have 20 out of this. One single little forgotten log. Mm, on the bottom. Uh, this makes me... We're going to save some money, honey. <laughs> I know. That's pretty nuts. What's so incredible, though, is that when we... Before we started deciding on what lumber we wanted to make, which is the cool part, we decided what lumber we would make, we just settled on this because it just seemed like a good place to start. But what's cool is, is that once you have a mill like this, we had a 14 by 14 beam, more or less, up there which is insane, you know, a giant piece of lumber. And then you go, what do I want out of that? You know, you can be as specific as you want. In fact, we could dry these like this and be like, you know what, we want some two by fours. Mm -hmm. And we could bring these back up to the mill, put them up there in a, in a stack vertical like this, cut them at four inches and make ourselves two by fours or two by tens, or, you know? It's really, really cool to have this thing. Well guys, the sun is going down. We've had a very productive day. We've obviously got to saw our first log today, and uh, we're both over the moon about it. We're going to have so much fun with this. So many different possibilities and opportunities are opening with us for, you know, our business and everything yeah. having this. Project-wise and business-wise. It is going to be such a game changer for us for real we want to thank all of you guys for watching there's a lot of new people watching our channel right now which is amazing we're seeing some growth that we haven't seen in a while so thank you very much and we hope you are enjoying these videos we will happily take any suggestions you have in the comment section down below or questions we will answer there if you want to see more behind the scenes follow us on instagram we're showing a lot more of this you know, behind the scenes over there. And you can DM us there with any questions or comments or concerns. <laughs> I'm trying not to laugh because Luna's having zoomies in the background <laughs> going nuts. But thank you guys again for watching and we will see you in the next one. Peace. <laughs> I, knew you were gonna say, I was trying not to. <laughs> I was waiting for you to say it. <laughs>